Hello, everyone. I hope everyone is doing good and all is well. And I've been trying to produce more content for you all. I mean, I do apologize, but I'm also still working my nine to five, too. So please bear with me. But anyway, today's chat is going to be about the massacre at Negro Fort which took place on July the 27th, 1816. Now, on this day, the United States military blew up an African-American and Native American settlement, taking the lives of 270 to 300 men, women, and children. I mean, possibly even more. Let's just be honest. And there's actually no excuse for what happened on this day at Negro Fort. And... With that being said, let's chat. Negro Fort was located in northwest Florida in Franklin County, not far from the mouth of the Apalachicola River. Now, the area in which Negro Fort was located is known to be very significant for many reasons. As it has been said, the site is known as a precursor, a precursor site rather, to the Underground Railroad. The site is also known as a symbol of the strong relationship between Seminole Native Americans and runaway slaves. Now, during the late 18th century and early 19th century, slaves escaped from Georgia and the Carolinas to northern Florida. And during this time, the area was actually under Spanish control. Now, the slaves that escaped to the area, they escaped there to seek shelter, protection, and safety from the Seminoles. And in return, the slaves, they cultivated the crops and gave the Seminoles one-third of what they produced as payment. And the Seminoles, they welcomed the slaves and they welcomed the developing black communities alongside their villages. And the fugitive slaves, they were also very knowledgeable when it comes to the white man's language of English, Spanish, and French. So they often served as interpreters for the Seminoles. And they served as intelligence agents as well for the Seminole tribes. Now, everyone was happy and benefiting from their arrangement. And it was pretty much, you know, quid pro quo. Like, everyone was doing their own thing and everyone was happy in harmony. But before we go any further, I must give you all some backstory on Negro Fort because it's very important to the story and it's very interesting as well. Now, Negro Fort, it was not known as Negro Fort when it first came to be. So let me fill you all in on some interesting facts. Now, near the conclusion of the War of 1812, around the summer and the fall of 1814, British Major Edward Nichols, He led an expedition to recruit the Seminoles and blacks in northern Florida to assist them in their fight against America. Now, to give you all a little backstory about the War of 1812, the War of 1812 actually lasted from 1812 to 1815. And the war, it was fought between the United States and Great Britain. And the war, it was fought over pretty much disagreements over trade, Western expansion, Native American policy, and the impressment of American soldiers by the British Navy. Now, for those of us who probably aren't sure what impressment is, impressment or the impressment of settlers was a practice used by, the, by Britain's Royal Navy. Now, the Royal Navy, they would send some of their officers aboard the American ships and the officers, they would inspect the crew and they would seize or take the sailors who they claimed had deserted British ships. But of course, they were actually American sailors. And some reports state that they actually gathered nearly 10,000 Americans using this practice. But back to the story. Now, as we said earlier, near the summer and fall of 1814, also near the end of the War of 1812, remember the war ended in 1815, British Major Edward Nichols, he led his expedition of recruiting the blacks and the Seminoles to help them fight America. Remember, we said that earlier. Now, the Seminoles and the blacks, they obliged and they joined Nichols and they actually constructed a fort 500 feet from the riverbank on Prospect Bluff. Now, the fort, when it was first constructed, it was named British Post. And the fort, it had pretty much an octagon shape, pretty much like a stop sign. And it covered about seven acres of land. 
And also the fort, it was originally mainly used as British headquarters for the negotiations that they had between the Seminoles and the black communities in the surrounding areas. Now, the British, they actually left or withdrew from the area and the fort in 1815. And when they left, they gave all of their military supplies and their artillery to the black community and the few Seminoles who had moved into the fort. Now, the black community and the Seminoles, they moved into the fort for protection, and they were able to successfully cultivate the surrounding plantations, which turned out to be very profitable for them. And ladies and gentlemen, this is how Negro Fort came to be and when it became known as Negro Fort. Now, Negro Fort, it then began serving as a beacon of light to the rebellious and restless slaves. I mean, many runaway slaves, they would flock to Negro Fort seeking refuge. I mean, hence why this area is known as a precursor site to the Underground Railroad. Now, as the months passed... Hundreds of blacks had settled in the area and they were doing very well for themselves. But of course, once word got around about the free black community, the white Georgia plantation owners, they were in an uproar. I mean, they were very upset and felt the free black community threatened the institute of slavery. And of course, they were not having this no form, no fashion. So, the white plantation owners, they began writing letters to the United States government demanding that they take action against the black community. Now, these black people were minding their own business, just trying to live and maintain. They weren't bothering anybody, and they were not a threat to anyone. And the white people, they simply hated the fact that they were free. And, you know, this cause, they felt like this could influence their slaves to want to escape as well. I mean, it's so sad how cold and heartless some people are, but let's keep on going. So the white people, they demanded the government do something about the free black community. Colonel Robert Patterson, he also urged the fort to be eliminated. He stated, and I quote, the service rendered by the destruction of the fort and the band of Negroes who held it is one of great and manifest importance of the United States and particularly those states bordering the Creek Nation. And it, and it has become the rendezvous for runaway slaves. Mm, mm, mm. Just say it. But let's keep on moving. So in June of 1816, the American Army, under the command of Major general andrew jackson they constructed a fort the fort was named fort scott and they constructed it out of camp crawford and they constructed this fort at the junction of the flint and chattahoochee rivers where they joined the Apalachicola river now they stated that this was done you know to protect the american border between georgia and florida and also slipped in that it was pretty much to destroy a negro fort but in order to receive supplies to their fort and their materials that they needed, the boats that had to go there, they had to travel through the Apalachicola River through Spanish territory right next to Negro Fort. And they claim that during one of these deliveries, when two gunboats stopped along the river, they were attacked by the infantry at Negro Fort and almost all of the Americans were killed. And now this event is known as the Watering Party Massacre. It's known as this because the men were said to have stopped to refill their canteens before being attacked. Now I want to give you all a little information on this as well. And I want you all to know what's also being said about the Watering Party Massacre. Now it's also said that the Watering Party Massacre was actually a scheme planned by Andrew Jackson to try and justify what they did to Negro Fort because that is an excuse they gave for what they did to the people at Negro Fort. And I'm just going to be honest. I'm giving Mr. Jackson the side eye as well. But let's keep on moving. Now in July of 1816, Jackson, he gave the order to destroy Negro Fort. Now, remember, as we said earlier, this area was under Spanish control at the time. So he also needed the permission of the Spanish governor to carry out the order. And Jackson, he got the Spanish governor's permission to carry out his order 
to destroy the Negro for under false pretenses. So he basically lied to the Spanish governor and stated it was a matter of national defense. You know, his excuse to destroy a Negro fort. Now, when Jackson received his permission to destroy a Negro fort, on July the 27th, 1816, he dispatched gunboats to the fort to carry out the order. And any surviving Negroes were to be returned to the white plantation owners. And when the citizens at Negro Fort got wind of the upcoming attack, about 200 black men, 30 Seminoles, and about 100 women and children prepared themselves to fight back. I mean, they were living at the fort, and this was their home, and they were simply just trying to protect it. Unfortunately, after only a few minutes of the American military's arrival at Negro Fort, the American military shot a cannonball into the fort where the ammunition was kept. And this caused a powerful explosion. And this explosion took the lives of 270 to 300 men, women, and children. And as we said earlier, possibly even more, according to the reports. Man, it's very sad and devastating what happened to these people. And also... Just to let you all know, no Americans were harmed during this encounter. Now, the American general, General Edmund P. Gaines, he's the one who actually led the American troops in the massacre. He stated, and I quote, the explosion was awful and the scene was horrible beyond description. So pretty much bits and pieces of human remains were scattered everywhere. That's why I said it could have been well over 300 people. I mean, you, you couldn't tell. It was just pieces everywhere. But I'm sorry if that was too gruesome. I apologize. But I did want to be honest with you all about it. But let's keep on going. Now, the survivors of the explosion, they were taken as prisoners before re being returned to slavery. I mean, they were returned to slavery under the claim that the Georgia plantation owners owned their ancestors. And a free black man, Mr. Garson... Now, he was the one who was said to be the commander of the black people when they tried to fight back. And the Choctaw chief, I'm sorry, who was aiding the people, they both survived the explosion. However, they were captured by the American military. And Garson, he was executed by the American Army's execution squad. And he had also been blamed for the watering party massacre that we discussed earlier. Now, the Choctaw chief, he was handed over to the Creeks. And the Creeks, not only did they take his life, but they also scalped him, according to the reports. Now, after the Seminoles mourned the losses at Negro Fort, this was a very, very sad thing what happened to these people. And remember, I said some of them were Seminoles as well. After their mourning, they you know, picked themselves up and they continued their pursuit of freedom and peace and avenging the American expansion. And the battle at Negro Ford, it actually marks the beginning of the first Seminole War. And the Americans, they originally tried to pay the massacre at Negro Ford off as a battle, but it was later uncovered that it was not a battle at all. It was, in fact, a cold, heartless massacre. Well... That brings us to the end of today's chat. Tell me what you all think. Do you think the black community was responsible for the watering party massacre? Or do you think it was all a scheme planned by Andrew Jackson to justify the massacre at Negro Fort? I mean, what do you think about the story altogether? I mean, please tell me your thoughts in the comments below. Please like the video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. We're still on our climb to a thousand subscribers. Um, we almost there, y'all. And if you would like to support the channel in a monetary way, the information to support will be in the description of the video below. And until next time, peace, love, and blessings.